Hello everyone, this is Jessica with Eco Life Natural. I wanted to talk about my cabinet incubator Sportsman 1502 and how I'm able to hatch on a weekly basis. So this incubator holds 288 eggs. And as you can see, it's slap full. So each rack holds two of these blue trays and each tray holds 48 eggs. So I have everything on a Wednesday schedule. So what I do is on the first Wednesday night, I add all my eggs to the top tray. I'm sorry, to the top rack. And then the second Wednesday, I remove them from here. I candle them. And then once I candle them, I move them to the second rack. On the third Wednesday, I remove them from the second rack and I put them down on the third rack. And obviously every Wednesday, these are being filled. So when I move this one down to the second, same Wednesday that I move these down, I'm adding more eggs up here. So this is always full. On the week of the third Wednesday, on that Saturday, I remove all the eggs from the third rack. I like candling them first just to make sure that they're still alive so that I can remove anything that I know died, I guess, at some point over here. So I move them down on Saturday and I turn off the automatic turner. And I'll show you right here. Sorry, I'm on the floor and I'm just scooting around. So if you hold the manual button, it'll start beeping and it'll start moving your trays. Let you guys see that. And then if you hold and press the A, it'll turn it back to automatic and then they'll just, they'll turn on their own when they're ready. Um, okay, I'll take you over here. So when I move my eggs down on Saturday, I never change the temperature inside the incubator. I keep it at 100.5 all the time. And the reason for that is because when you buy this incubator, it gives you a recommendation on what you should have it on and you can either bring it up or maybe bring it down when you're locking everything down. Well, I noticed that either my eggs were hatching too early or they were hatching too late. So I read somewhere that if you just bring it up five degrees and see if that helps and if it does, actually I think the manual for this incubator tells you that when you, you'll find this sweet spot and you'll just keep it on that temperature all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I hatch Buff Orbingtons, Leghorns and Polish Chicks and the 100.5 temperature works just fine, so I keep it at that. Now, when you buy this incubator, it's going to, I think it comes with two wicks that you put in here. Once you put your little babies down there, you wanna raise the humidity. In my opinion, those wicks suck. They don't last long and they get really yucky and it's hard for you to wash them. What I do, oh, here they are, is I just bought some sponges from, I believe I got these at Walmart, and I only put two of them in there. Depending on how many chicks I have in the hatching box, I may have to put three, sometimes even four. My last hatch, I only hatched, uh, I got my little cheat sheet here. I only hatched 17. So because there were in a lot of babies in there, the humidity never went past 48. So I had to put an extra sponge in there and that brought it up to maybe 55, 58 or something like that. They all hatched. Very important, usually between day 10 and day 15. And it's when you move them down here. If you have any eggs that are bad and have any built up bacteria, it's going to happen down here. What I do is I have a little flashlight up here and every day I just take a look down here just to make sure that nothing is oozing. Now, once it starts oozing, you're gonna smell it. Um, what I like to do is just 
put my nose real close to this little hole right here. It's so it's pushing all the air out. It comes out through here. You'll smell it if there's something bad through there. Um, if you smell anything off, grab. I'll start with these because 9 out of 10, it's going to happen down here. It usually doesn't happen here. Right here. Grab all these eggs. Take them out. If nothing is oozing, you're literally, you're literally going to have to sniff every single egg. I've had it happen to me before where... I had an egg here that went bad. I don't know if it was bacteria built up. The egg was heavy, so I think it's just that the chicken there died. And it happened a little after day 15, and it smelled really, really bad. So I had to take them all out and literally smell each and every one of them. So just very important to keep that in mind. If you smell anything off, you need to check your eggs. If you just leave them in there, they can pop. And once they pop and let all that bacteria out into the open over here, you're gonna have to throw all your eggs out. Now, if you're doing 288 eggs at a time here, you're gonna have to throw them all out. They None of them can be saved. So please keep that in mind when you're incubating in general to check your eggs, smell them, and get rid of anything that looks off. So I like to keep a little list. I'll just zoom in so you can see that. Got my breeds, the number of eggs I put in there on the first Wednesday. Then I have my candle date, oh, sorry, set date, my candle date. Now when I candle my eggs, I take count again. See over here, I started with 22 Buff Orbingtons. Only 15 of them were good. So I like to keep track of what I put in there, how many I lost, and then how many actually hatched. So I do that every week for all my babies. And I'll show you a few that I hatched a few days ago. They are under their plate. So I'm going to have to turn this upside down and see. Hi, babies. So we have Buff Orbingtons and a few Polish babies. I think right here. They seem to all be very happy down there. I got this heat plate, tractor supply. I keep the setting on brooder. They all go down there when they want to take a nap and get warm. They'll run out here and eat, drink some water, and then they'll run right back. Oh, hello.